Welcome to Zeta Global Radio. I am so glad you're here in this month of April to celebrate Mother Earth. And of course, that is near and dear to me and to Howard and to hopefully you as well that we are going to be talking this month about Music to Heal the Earth. And actually, today, next week, every show this month is dedicated to some sort of topic that will affect us all, but particularly the planet, Mother Earth, and everything that she stands for, everything we stand for, and hopefully you as well. So we're going to get right into this topic, as of course you've seen me promoting what this show is about, and it's an actually big, big topic. And so I'm thrilled, thrilled that I was introduced to David Cam. He's president of the newly formed Nevada Blockchain Association and is a co-author of a new book on the future of blockchain technology. He is also the co-host of a new upcoming TV show on blockchain and cryptocurrencies. He's the inventor, visionary, and creator of the Earth Dollar, and he hopes to use the blockchain counterculture movement to alleviate global poverty and to heal our Mother Earth. So that truly speaks to me, and we're going to even get into all those definitions right now. So welcome to the show, David. I'm really, really honored to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me there here. I'm really honored to be on the show. Well, <clears throat> you're talking about these terms that you're hearing a lot in the news, you hear them potentially be controversial, you hear sort of the spiritual communities endorsing it, and then you hear other people um, blasting it. I, I remember back in the days of the dinar, and we can get into that, I'm sure, as well. But I really, really, because we're calling this Cryptocurrencies 101, I really want you to explain first off a little bit about yourself um, how you kind of got involved with this this topic and then as we go along the way in the show let's talk about these names Bitcoin cryptocurrencies and anything else that can really explain what this is and then how it relates to the what you're calling the earth dollar so why don't we start off with a little bit more about you and then we'll get right into it um, yes uh, my name is David Cam. I started my journey in around 2010 when I had a vision of uh, Mother Earth. It was in a dream, and uh, that vision led me on a spiritual journey uh, to contact indigenous uh, nations at that time. And these indigenous nations uh, in 2010 asked me uh, in around 2011 to actually look at the virtual currencies to have their own currency. So um, also to find a way to use this currency to protect uh, the Mother Earth uh, while lifting them out of poverty. So uh, on that journey, that's where uh, I got started. There was uh, Bitcoin people in 2011, uh, between 2011 and 2013, people did not know what was Bitcoin. Bitcoin was actually around less than $70 U.S. now. Now it's at uh, seven thousand dollar US. So when I first started, it was pretty early on. When you say Bitcoin was around, like who came up with Bitcoin, and what exactly is Bitcoin? Uh, Bitcoin. Uh, there's actually there's a big difference between Bitcoin and uh, blockchain. You know what, David? Hold on one second. I have to repeat that. So hold on one second. That's actually a good cutting point. So hold on one second. So when you are saying Bitcoin, let's just take it back because I know people are hearing these words, but Bitcoin is just even the word itself. Like, is what is a Bitcoin? And I'm just going to break it down because this is 101, and even I don't even know some of the stuff. Uh, actually, the Bitcoin was just a name that was made up um, when an uh, anonymous person uh, registered a domain name called Bitcoin.org in around August 18, 20, uh, 2008. So that's where they got the name and decided to uh, create, uh, then they wrote a white paper uh, uh, like uh, on October 31st. Uh, 2008 on um, on the 
Bitcoin. They call it a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. So basically, it allows people to transfer money between each other with no middlemen. Think of it, I transfer money or value to you without having going through a bank or government or any uh, middleman. So it's, it's directly what person to person. So that makes it uh, kind of scary for governments because they said if uh, you're able to transfer money from one to another, you might do uh, terrible things if nobody's watching you, you know. So when you're seeing the word Bitcoin, what exactly is a Bitcoin? A Bitcoin is actually a name that was a, a domain name that was registered in uh, 2008 uh, by anonymous persons. And also he put out a white paper uh, describing a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Uh, in 2008, uh, he put out a paper. And uh, that's what it is. Exactly it, what it is is um, allows people to transfer money or value between each other without a middleman, without a bank to verify it. Um, so people can actually transfer money or value between each other without government or um, a bank in the middle. So it's just uh, directly from person to person, and it can allow to transfer large amounts of value or uh, money between uh, people. So. It's a little bit scary for governments or banks is because uh, then the, they don't need banks or governments to uh, to look be a middleman to look after things and uh, and governments imagine that uh, when the, when people can transfer money between each other with no monitoring uh, or no surveillance then um, People might do awful things, but um, I think the majority of people are good. Maybe there's a very, very small percentage of people who actually uh, abuse the system. And they could do it with cash anyways, uh, with a U.S. dollar or any uh, uh, banking system. It's a little bit more difficult, but it could be done also. So when the monies get transferred, and I, I, I have to say that generally in four years, I... I I'm very versed in these topics, but I'm actually learning as we speak together. So when I see people putting pictures, in fact, even my graphic today, there's symbols and there's coins. Like if people are transferring money to money, you know, directly, how are they cashing yet and then actually turning it into like something physically tangible? Uh, well, let me just uh, go back and explain. Let's say, example, I want to transfer money to you uh, in the regular system. We would go to the bank. A wire transfer would cost me around $25, $35, right? Then, uh, then it will cost you another $25 or $35 to receive it, and it may take four to seven days for you before you receive the money. It's very, very, very slow. So... Um, so, uh, so the, what the Bitcoin or cryptocurrency allows people to transfer uh, the value or money from I send uh, from me to you, uh, we can do it in seconds, and uh, and it's do it for pennies uh, instead of having to wait to, for clearance for four to seven days, and it costs uh, a lot of money. Let's say a lot of people who are working uh, domestically, they want to transfer money to their families. Imagine having to pay uh, that uh, huge fee every time that <laughs> transfer money to their family, and it takes a few days. Uh, so it is, it's kind of like the old system has middlemen, which just takes very long, but the, the new system is to person to person, uh, called peer to peer, and very fast. But is it, since it's all electronic, there really isn't actual currency, right? No, actually there is no such thing actually as a Bitcoin. Uh, it's a ledger entry into uh, a public uh, counting uh, book. That's what I thought. It's a le it's a ledger entry. That's the best way to say it. So then, why? I guess what's the craze now? Because some people, like I even watched that video on you online, YouTube, or something that says that you could potentially be a billionaire. And I hear people. I mean, I watch people posting all day long on Facebook saying or any social media, go buy Bitcoin, go buy Bitcoin. So what essentially, what are they buying? Are they buying the, the ledger? 
Are they, are they buying a ledger entry of digital um, currency? Um, usually, uh, the, in a normal way, the ledger is kept by the bank. Uh, the bank says that you transfer uh, uh, some digits from uh, person A to person B. So the bank would be in charge of that uh, ledger entry. So actually, so uh, in the Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency, is actually everybody is holding a ledger. Uh, there's millions of people on a computer who has a copies of these ledger. So it just says I have transferred uh, value from uh, the person A to person B on the public ledger, which is viewable by on millions of computers. So it cannot be altered because there's, you have altered millions of computers to to confer, uh, to be able to basically hack the system, uh, which is impossible to do. Hmm. Okay, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I, we're going to finish up if there's more about Bitcoin. But then I want to talk about the word cryptocurrency and what that is in relation and get into this next topic. You're listening to Zeta Global Radio. I am your host, Lainey Savante, and we are here with David Cam. We'll be back in a moment. Are you ready to delve deeper to find the truth of who you are and discover your own unique gifts for the world? Have you searched for an understanding of your creative expression and how to bring that into form? World-renowned spiritual practitioners Teresina and Martin Bacons invite you to two special upcoming enlightened retreats. May 17th through 19th, join Teresina with co-presenter Cheryl Ryder for the powerful retreat Healing with the Five Elements, held at the Sevilleta Federal Wildlife Refuge between Berlin and Socorro, New Mexico. On June 8th through 10th, Teresina and Martin Bacons will be back teaching the sacred spiral of the phenomenal people, now reserving on the beautiful tropical paradise of Pine Island in southwest Florida. You'll join others to celebrate the sacred understanding of self, remember the ancient wisdom encoded in your body, and the opportunity to explore the creatrix within. You will emerge with the experience of an even more inspired, empowered you. Early registration and pricing is available for both retreats. And for more information, please visit beaconsoflove.com. That's beaconsoflove.com. The Remedy is Albuquerque, New Mexico's premier urban day spa. Created with you in mind, The Remedy offers a spa experience that goes beyond the highest quality treatments and products. They're there to help you relax, regroup, rejuvenate, and escape a bit from your busy life. You'll feel it the second you walk in their doors. They have a distinct menu of Ayurvedic services and therapies to infuse a sense of peace and well-being while allowing you to enjoy a luxurious feel and experience. Ayurvedic lifestyle consultations are available and suggested treatments that include shirodhara, marma work, therapeutic massage, Ayurvedic oils, detoxification, and nourishment of the body. For more information, please visit theremedydayspa.com today. Welcome back to Zeta Global Radio. Thank you for being here today. We are here with David Cam. If you just are tuning in, we are discussing cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, blockchain, all these new new paradigm technologies. And we're also going to talk about today what the Earth dollar is. So if you're just tuning in, I highly recommend you go back to the podcast and listen to what we talked about with David about Bitcoin. So now I want to know, is Bitcoin a type of cryptocurrency or is cryptocurrency something else? Uh, Bitcoin is actually made up of three things. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. Yep. Payment system. It's a payment system. Payment system. I got that. Yep. And the third is a blockchain. Blockchain. Okay. So now to keep it straight in my head and our listeners, is blockchain, and I know you're going to explain what blockchain is, is blockchain different than a cryptocurrency or is they the same? Uh, the blockchain is basically the ledger entry, basically the, the book itself that uh, keeps all the logs of uh, the transfers between uh, person A to person B. Okay. 
that can hold the data on millions of computers. Right now, when Bitcoin first started, it was used to hold a uh, ledger entry or um, Bitcoin. But now, these uh, databases, blockchain is being used to hold other things like uh, voting for voter registration, votes, and uh, uh, different things, you know. So I think decentralized database of blockchain. Now, where do you fit in to all of this? So I can have an understanding, like, do you manage the ledger? Or, like, what is your role in this whole experience? And why is this going to be re – well, I think you explained why it's going to be revolutionary for the planet. But let's just maybe address the first question. What is your role in this, or how how do you fit into this picture of everything that we're talking about? Uh, my role to fit into this is to um, – and my mission – it uses the blockchain technology to overcome global poverty and to create a sustainable world. Uh, basically, um, I find that uh, right now, uh, to create a sustainable plan, fortunately, we're tied into a monetary system. Right. It's actually it's destroying the planet. So, what I'm proposing is to have a monetary system. Uh, that is not tied to the destroying the planet, but tied to restoring the planet. So, the money system is destroying the planet. This system... The money system and economic system is currently destroying the planet. My goal is to use, create a new monetary system that restores the planet. Basically, it creates wealth by planting more trees, cleaning up the uh, water, uh, the fresh waters, uh, protecting the oceans, uh, and creating a more um, uh, sustainable world to have more hybrid cars, more solar panels on roofs, and uh, create more green jobs. So that is my role. Well, that's a beautiful role, <clears throat> and I think we share that same passion in, in what we do with Music Till the Earth is wanting to support and advocate um, resources for the people who are doing the work of saving the planet and moving humanity forward. So it sounds like you have found that platform through this. Were you always a numbers guy, or is do, do you need to be... Um, in finance to have a bit, to have a full understanding of this, or this is maybe just more um, people are, maybe it's me, um, locked into like sort of all this terminology. Um, you know, is this something that everyone can um, easily pick up pretty quickly besides listening to this show? Like in, in, you know, if they wanted to go out and be part of this, this new global system. Um, basically, uh, the word economy, Paperwork, work, which means to manage our, our home. So the way I see it is that um, if we have a, a co economic system that manages our home, we can all be part of it because uh, anybody can that is able to take care of their own house or home can be a part of it because now we're to having a more global conversation. How are we going to take care of our Mother Earth? So we're trying to create an economic system that actually takes care of our home, which is our other earth. Now, how does altcoin fit into this? Is that different than Bitcoin? Uh, altcoin is everything other than Bitcoin. So uh, the most uh, popular altcoins uh, include like uh, Ethereum, uh, Monero, uh, Ripple, Neo and other ones. So anything other than Bitcoin, uh, everything that's like um, these new uh, altcoins is basically uh, a copy of Bitcoin. So they're taking the Bitcoin technology and they're altering it. So that's why they call alternatives to Bitcoin, to altcoin alternatives. And the, and the tokens that we see in pictures, and of course in I have in the graphics for this show, what are these tokens? Because they look very futuristic. Uh, yeah, there is a difference between uh, altcoins and tokens, actually. Altcoin and what? There's a difference between altcoin 
and a token. Oh, there's a difference between altcoin and tokens. Okay, yeah. So share me, share with me the difference. Uh, altcoins, uh, altcoins are actually they have their own blockchain. So it is like a Bitcoin. They have a separate blockchain or a database from uh, from Bitcoin. So tokens uh, generally the the concept of tokens. Uh, it is uh, right now most tokens are created on the Ethereum blockchain, which is um, they're actually it's a, they're creating what they call a side chain uh, using the ERC20 standard. Basically, they're actually it's a derivative or a part of the Ethereum blockchain. Most of these tokens that are out there, so it it, it uh, the information rests on the Ethereum database or blockchain. Think about uh, Bitcoin as a train with different uh, cars on the train, right? These trains are, uh, uh, sections of trains are different data that's attached to it. That's why they call it blockchain. Then uh, Ethereum is not, uh, it's another train uh, where they attach uh, the data onto it like cars, you know, like separate sections mm-hmm. of cars attached together, and that's why they call it blockchain. Think about that. Well, see, there I understand that. Okay, so now there's two trains, and the other one's Ethereum train. Now, uh, basically a token is they're attaching another car onto one of the smaller cars, like 10 car, uh, cars attached together that makes Ethereum. Uh, somebody decides I'm going to attach a smaller car to one of the cars, basically it's a block of data that's attached to a part of a, one of the cars. Uh, so to think about it like that. I guess where I'm confused is that I see that they all attach, but what do they do? Do they increase the value by attaching to each other? No, it's just an attachment of uh, data. Oh, attachment of data. Oh, okay. And the data is part of the ledger, which is the blockchain? Yeah, it's a part of the Ethereum uh, blockchain. That is correct. Uh, the uh, tokens, both of the tokens. Okay. All right. So that I'm tracking. Well, for we're going to take a break in a minute here, but in a, in, a, in a recap, what would you say is the most important thing for somebody to know who's just beginning like me or somebody else to understand that we need to know about this, other than it exists, um, some people, it, it exists, and what? I think the most important thing is uh, to talk about the, the independence or the sovereignty of these. Creating that freedom, yeah. Exactly, that's the freedom without having the government uh, central bank control or uh, Okay, perfect. All right, well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about what is the Earth dollar. You're listening to Zeta Global Radio. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, Lainey Savante here, and I'd love for you to visit my new Facebook page for my private tarot and oracle session readings called Intuitive Wisdom. That's I-N, the number two, U-I-T-I-V-E, Wisdom. Conscious strategies for manifesting a more harmonious life. Don't we all want to have that? Let's see what's in the cards for you as we look at what needs to be cleared, expanded upon, and evolved. There's a lot to explore when we take a deeper look inside ourselves. Sandy Wyndham is Florida's premier artistic photographer. Her passion shines through every picture she takes. Whether creating a series of artistic shots, headshots, corporate shots, or capturing one of life's most memorable moments, she just can't be beat. Consider Sandy Wyndham Photography. Visit her now at sandywyndham.com and let her know you're a ZGR listener for special discounts. Welcome back to ZGR. Thank you for tuning in today with me and David Cam. And we are talking about this labyrinth of information um, on the superhighway. But the most important thing we learned in the last segment, which David, I think, couldn't say it better, is that 
we're all coming to a point here where we're realizing that we need to stand up and, and honor our own sovereignty for ourselves and for the community at large. And by doing that, new technologies are coming onto the planet, including currencies that are allowing that to happen. So that is the most really the essential part of what we're talking about today, correct? Uh, yes, it's uh, talking about the uh, freedom, actually. So you have created something called the Earth Dollar. Uh, the Earth Dollar is uh, what they call the alternative uh, currency, altcoin. Um, the Earth Dollar is actually designed to restore the Earth. It's basically, um, how it works is the Earth Dollar is backed by the trees, fresh water, mineral rights, carbon credits and anything on the land, which we call the fruits of the land. And since it's tied to people's wealth, if they take care of the fruits of the land, including the water, the trees, it increases their wealth. So let's say in the area, there's a million trees backing the earth dollar. But if we actually plant another million trees, two million trees, basically we double the wealth uh, and the assets backing the earth dollar. If the lake is polluted and has a low water quality index, uh, if actually we clean it up, it becomes a tremendous asset value. So now there's incentive for people to work together to restore the earth and restore the waters, to plant more trees, to protect the wildlife, uh, like that. That's a concept of the earth dollar is actually it restores the earth because it's used, the fruits of the land are used to back the earth dollar, and it has a restored value. So, first off, that's incredibly beautiful, and I love this concept entirely, and I think that what I find very interesting is that shouldn't people be doing this anyways, even before the earth dollar concept has been conceived? Actually, it's very difficult for people to do. Let's say, example, um, Let's say Amazon jungle has oil underground. Uh, right now, they gain the value by digging up the Amazon jungle, which is they're, they're actually presently doing, is that they would go in and try to exploit the oil. Uh, so, but our the earth dollar is actually we pay people um, to keep the oil un in the ground. So we will go in and we'll say, we'll pay you X amount of money uh, like using, the, we'll pay X amount of dirt, the earth dollars to keep the oil in the ground, but use the oil underground uh, as an asset. Uh, uh, Mother Earth is a vault to protect the oil, and we we'll, can keep it there forever. And we all, all, will only extract it in the case of a, a emergency. And if the earth dollar falls below a really low value, so it protects the. Uh, you think that the, uh, that the current system doesn't allow that? Well, um, I see why you have been connecting with the indigenous communities, because hearing what you're saying is so in alignment with honoring the sovereignty of the creatress herself, the mother. So I really want to acknowledge this piece of it that I, I can really understand when you're talking about this. I don't know why I, my understanding of the Bitcoin, altcoin, crypto is so different. It's like it has a different vibration for me, but when you talk about the Earth dollar, I really understand that. And But are you saying they're all the same or they're all, they are very different? Uh, the Earth dollar is very different from everything else. It's, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than everything else because it's not... Um, it's not an investment. It's not designed for investment. It's designed for humanitarian efforts to overcome poverty and uh, restore the earth. So the energy is very different from uh, other uh, cryptocurrencies. Mainly, it's designed to get rich. Uh, I know that there's a video out there saying that I'll become a billionaire, but that. Um, it, when I become a billionaire, I'm going to give it away. Well, and I didn't mean that in any disrespect at all, but I was just using that as a reference that people are, well, let's just say, I'm going to just, well, let me finish that and then I'll say that um, people are always wanting to find a way to get rich and a good majority of the spiritual people that I know, you know, everybody knows, 
wants to use the money when they have it to do great things in the world. So there's nothing wrong with wanting to be rich, correct? Because we want to use it to many different ways, not, you know, self-indulgent ways, but ways to honor the planet or causes or whatever. So I don't think anything wrong with that. I do find confusion. And were you around during these dinar days? Uh, I heard a little bit about it, uh, a little bit about it, but uh, you could ask me the question about it. I, I would know a little bit about it if I, if I can answer the question, I will. Well, it, you know, for a decade, decades, people had talked about the Iraqi dinar and it was going to revalue and everybody should invest in the dinar. And most people I know in the spiritual communities did that with the intention of having these visions of when this revalued, that this money would go to positive effects in the world and it it didn't revalue and many people spent a lot of money and it really didn't go anywhere so i think that i i wanted to have this show to kind of not debunk but to really understand what is all these new currencies that we're talking about because some of the old currencies didn't come to fruition that we all thought would so Getting an understanding here today is helpful for everybody. Uh, usually, uh, Iraqi dinars is actually it's part of the fiat uh, currency system. Fiat means the trust in the government. It goes up in value when actually um, the more people will trust the government. Uh, the question is right now, it doesn't, it's not going up in value, is do you trust the Iraqi government? If in the in a future there comes the regime people can trust, they'll go up in value. So that's what the fiat currency system is. People holding on to these uh, the Iraqi dinars, is hope, they're hoping that the uh, Iraqi government will become stabilized and become uh, the democracy and so on. So that is uh, the hope of the of the fiat system, but the cryptocurrency system is uh, is very different. It's based on supply and demand. So there is most of the cryptocurrencies have a limited supply. So right now, uh, there's only 15 million people using cryptocurrencies, but there's 7 billion people on the planet. So as uh, more and more people move to use cryptocurrency and there's limited supply, uh, example for Bitcoin, there's a limited supply of 21 million Bitcoins. So as more and more people move to use it, uh, there is going to become a more de- uh, uh, demand than supply. So that's why the price will go up. That is really clear, and that makes a, a absolute lot of sense. Who is the one who set the amount of how many how how much? supply there is to begin with it's you can't add more to the supply chain you can't inflate it or it, it, who created the amount the limit uh, usually uh, the issuer created the uh, amount or the limit uh, like bitcoin has 21 million other uh, altcoins have a different amount of, uh, of that is uh, that can be created. The Earth dog is structured very differently. It's created uh, based on the amount of assets we're holding. Yep. Uh, mint or uh, create more Earth dollars based on the amount of assets we're holding. And when we talk about the Earth dollar, which you've created, and other altcoins and other systems. Is there to no end how many of these can be established? Like now, what you know, is there like five now and could there be 50? Or is there to no end when people can keep issuing more? Or um, is it's not regulated, obviously, that we're trying to not regulate it. So help me understand that a little bit more clearly for our audience. Yeah, us is um, for the Earth Dollar itself. Everybody's part of the Earth Dollar Association. So the Earth Dollar Association, uh, in their wallet, they have a vote. So people can vote to in, uh, increase the supply or uh, or not increase the supply, but based on the, um, the asset value. So most of the time, it's, uh, if the, once the asset is evaluated and we can mint 10% as a formula, but there are conditions that say that people can say we don't want to um, uh, mint more, you know. Understood. Can other people create more, like a, a new type of Bitcoin or altcoin? 
Uh, yes, there's uh, right now 1,500 cryptocurrencies and tokens around the world. There's a lot, 1,500 different types. Uh, you know, for us, it's like um, it's not a matter of creating more uh, these uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, my view is that what are you going to be using it for? Are you using it for benefit to humanity? or use mm -hmm. this for speculation or definitely get rich. Uh, we are supporting the, the idea that uh, cryptocurrencies will be used for to help humanity and different uh, projects, including creating like uh, uh, sustainable villages, uh, permaculture, organic farming, uh, more uh, uh, solar power, uh, and all those different things that we are actually promoting and supporting. Beautiful. Thank you, David. We'll be right back, and we will wrap up one last segment, getting your final thoughts, and I can't wait to share them on a few more things about this. And, um, wow, from <coughs> the first segment to the third, I'm already much more understanding, so I know our listeners are. So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be listening to... Uh, our wonderful sponsors and our advertisers. We're so grateful for them. All right, we'll be right back. Trice Massage Therapy and Skin Care is Southwest Florida's premier holistic and wellness spa to relax and rejuvenate your well-being. Founded by Lucille Trice, this enlightened haven located in Cape Coral offers a variety of massage therapies including Swedish, deep tissue, and trigger point massage. Trice offers detoxifying body wraps and facials using natural organic ingredients to pamper your skin and restore balance and health. Visit their Trice Massage Therapy and Skin Care Facebook page or call 239-672-0526 and book your experience today. Mention ZGR and receive a complimentary Ionic Foot Detox experience. Spiritual Communities Network, where we honor the uniqueness in our oneness. Visit our website to meet our vast spiritual community of healers, therapists, conscious events, and activities. Visit and check out our directory, upcoming retreats, workshops, products, free videos, and much more. Many services are available globally by phone, Skype, and other sources of media. You'll also find more information on how you can be a member to promote the work you're doing in the world. Visit us now at spiritualcommunitiesnetwork.com. Welcome back to Zeta Global Radio. What a fascinating show today. Not only is it uh, sort of the wave of the future, but it's a uh, sovereign, conscious, and uh, much more understanding for me. I hope it is for you. Now, while talking off air, uh, we got into a discussion about music, which, of course, is a very big piece, as I started off with, with our upcoming Music to Heal the Earth project. And it turns out that David also can relate the idea of music to cryptocurrency. So I am all ears. So let's share with our audience how cryptocurrencies is now kind of, you has, is this proven concept? Are you, this is a, a theory or this is for real that it can do something in the music industry? I'm very interested to hear this. I'm in agreement with uh, Heidi Little and uh, for, she's the sign of Universal Records uh, for the music project and cryptocurrencies. So, uh, uh, mostly right now at the current system, economic system, art has to be sold to have value. So let's say uh, for uh, a photo, such a photograph or a movie or for uh, music, it has to be sold in order to have value. But what, imagine if you can have value at the creation stage. Once it's created, it has value, and, and that value can be uh, actually uh, monetized to release this to you immediately. So that's the concept that uh, cryptocurrencies can uh, do, is that let's say um, right now if you want to create an album, you, uh, you have to go to a record label and ask for a lot of money to actually uh, produce the album. Or if you want to have a concert, you have to go to uh, the record label or uh, music producers to actually uh, hold the concert. But uh, what the cryptocurrencies allow you to do is to, yeah, allows you to raise money in advance 
to uh, create the album. Let's say um, they issue a uh, kit for a uh, point, uh, uh, then music produced and get distributed to people holding the cryptocurrencies or the altcoins or the tokens. So it allows people to create an uh, album. This album costs a couple million dollars. They could actually raise that money. Uh, and actually, they can actually more money is going back to the artists because usually uh, most of the record labels uh, only pay the pennies, but they could keep up to 50 to 75 to 90 percent of the money that they bring in for a record label. So that's the power of the cryptocurrencies and music. And this is being done right now? Uh, no, it, it, we just signed the first contract uh, to do it uh, using the Earth dollar uh, and using music as an asset. To, but we haven't announced it yet. Uh, this is one of our, the things, uh, projects we're doing. This is fascinating. Because intellectual pro uh, property assets and, and global poverty, but uh, it's not only assets of the earth, but actual asset, assets can be created. So uh, if a person taking a photo, making a video, making music, and actually they can use their creativity to end global poverty and also to restore the planet because now there's a way to actually monetize the, the creativity of people uh, and release it back to them, uh, but they also can use it to uh, benefit the world. Well, do you see this happening in all sorts, not just the music industry, but what about literary instead of people getting, you know, publishing world? What about for books? Exactly. The book can be an asset uh, also. So uh, anything that uh, is right now, people don't see it as assets can become uh, a value because uh, the cryptocurrency allows it, people to uh, release those uh, wealth generate wealth using dormant, underused, or unused, or new assets. Well, I'm looking forward to learning more. I'm sure our audience is. How do they learn more about this? Is there a, a legitimate source? Do you have particular websites for the Earth Dollar and other things? Go ahead and let our audience know how they can learn more about all these different areas of conversation. Uh, most of these uh, areas of conversation are not published actually oh, okay these, uh, li these uh, listeners are very lucky to be able to hear uh, all those things that's coming into the world um, our website is at earthdollar.org okay also bitcoin you can learn about bitcoin at bitcoin.org o-r-g okay also you could actually learn about it through youtube a lot of people just uh, type in uh, cryptocurrencies or blockchain or bitcoin and they could actually uh, learn a little bit more about cryptocurrencies because and anything you can imagine of your creativity can be uh find a way to um to actually uh help you financially uh, using cryptocurrency. So there's a lot of uh, reader, uh, listeners out there who say, I I'm struggling with, uh, I have an I a really brilliant idea. I want to start a new business. I want to uh, have organic food product I want to put out into the world. Uh, all that can be done with uh, cryptocurrency to finance all those things. So uh, it, it, it might uh, unleash a new type of uh, uh, wealth and also be able to create more jobs that are um, uh, self-employed, you know, that people want, that a lot of people want to do that. Well, of course, and I understand that completely. I'm going to ask you one more question just so I can understand the difference between cryptocurrency and plain old been around forever, the bartering system, where people are just trading their talents and gifts and services with one another based on the value of what they perceive it to be? When uh, the barter system, I love the barter system, but it's only, uh, barter system is only locally. Uh, let's say if uh, it cannot be done internationally, and also um, if I have tomatoes and I have, uh, one person has tomatoes, other person has jeans, but that person doesn't want the jeans, uh, it, there's no transaction, so they have to wait. So somebody is interested in, it has to be a matching. Somebody has to be interested in apples, the other person has to be interested in genes at the same time before they can exchange something. 
uh, well, cryptocurrencies allow people to exchange anything of value, of value, you know, attached to it. Okay, that that's really clear for me. All right, well, we have another couple minutes left. Any last final thoughts you want to impart to our listeners who are getting a sneak peek into this world, which you said that isn't highly publicized? Any last things you want to share with us? Um, I think uh, a lot of these, if uh, these uh, things about cryptocurrencies, a lot of people say. Uh, uh, spiritual people I have met, including myself, say that uh, money is the uh, root of all evil, uh, which is, I think, um, but in, in this uh, world, uh, these the cryptocurrencies, even the earth doll, is a transitional period that we can move out of the money system into a no money system. So we say uh, it's a transition. So uh, to allow that to happen, uh, we need the uh, 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 these cryptocurrencies to be able to transition us into a more spiritual world. Uh, it is not um, the it's not the ultimate thing that uh, cryptocurrencies are spiritual. It's just a tool to have help us transition to a more spiritual world because we still need to buy food. We need to need to travel by plane or or other things that uh, we, it's better to use a currency that is earth-friendly and also is more socially conscious than the existing one. Agreed. Well, thank you for being here today, and thank you for sharing your wisdom. You've certainly amassed a lot, and I love the fact that we're moving towards systems as people uh, become more versed in this that are making a difference for and not against. So, um I really am honored and touched by the work that you're doing, and I look forward to having you back on the show in the future where we can show. Do you remember when we were doing this show and it was 101 and we were just explaining it? I look forward to having a future show where this is just common discussion because we've been doing it this way. Don't you think? Uh, yes, we can actually, um, perhaps in the future, we can set up uh, if we have a website, we can set up like a wallet and allow people to have some uh, Earth dollars to test, you know, that like test drive. Then afterwards, uh-huh. we, can say, uh, we then we can say that we can do a show that is not 102. <laughs> David, you and I are going to be here. I'm going to say next year, next April, we're going to do another show. How's that? <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, good. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, listeners, for tuning into this and getting a sense of where the planet is going and needs to be supported by all of you. So be sure and share this podcast. It's now on YouTube and of course at a globalradio.com and I post it on Facebook page. So lots of ways to hear this show. Please share it far and wide. Have a great blessed week. Another amazing show next week's in store for you. How cryptocurrencies are affecting the bee world and we'll be here we'll have alicia b forrester scott back with us she's always tuning in with us and we're thrilled to give us the update on what's happening with the bees and somehow it's tied into everything we're talking about today and i can't wait to find out what that's about so that's next week thanks again thanks david have everybody have a wonderful week (laughs) 